All right, so veteran anti-apartheid activists uh, were expected to protest during the inquiry into undercover officers uh, that were spied upon, misrepresented, lied about and mistreated by police undercover officers during the late 1960s, 1970s and 1980s, year after year until Nelson Mandela was released from prison in 1990. Lord Peter Hayne, a former chair of the Stop the 70 Tour campaign, and others will each insist that police were infiltrating the wrong people, the anti-apartheid campaigners, rather than the apartheid agents, uh, illegal activity in Britain. So Lord Peter Hayne joins me live this evening. Lord Peter Hayne, a very good evening to you. Thank you very much for joining us here on SABC News. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to start here. Uh, just a day after, you know, South Africa celebrated Freedom Day, I'd really like to get your comment. And, uh, you know, on a day that uh, the president of the organization that you supported during apartheid is appearing before the State Capture Commission here in South Africa, you were at the forefront internationally pushing for a proper investigation. How do you feel? Well, I am pleased that President Ramaphosa took full responsibility on behalf of the ANC for the terrible corruption that there was under former President Zuma. I think it's right that he was frank about that. He said that uh, people should go to jail if, they, uh, if the evidence points that way. And he was very um, upfront about it, and that's good, because he has tried to chart a new future for South Africa along the Nelson Mandela path that was left so terribly under former President Zuma and his cronies, the Gupta brothers, who simply looted the country, as everybody knows. Uh, Lord uh, Peter Hayne, I think let me just move now to, to the crux of our interview. Uh, you supported the liberation organization in South Africa by, Morgan, by mobilizing the international community to isolate the apartheid regime. Now you want the uh, British government and police to account in terms of what they did to support the apartheid regime. What do you want? Well, I'm appearing on Friday... Uh, as a witness before the official inquiry into undercover police officers. These were police officers who infiltrated the anti-apartheid movement, infiltrated the Stop the 70 Tour campaign, which I led in 1969-70 and took direct action to disrupt the all-white Springbok Tour, selected on a racist basis. Sio Khaleesi, the, the, the captain of the Springboks now, could not have been uh, chosen uh, for the team under apartheid and we took action to stop those tours and we succeeded and it now uh, has been revealed that mm -hmm. there were undercover police agents spying on us and uh, seeking to disrupt us when what they should have been doing and this will be the burden of my evidence and that given by Christabel Gurney mm -hmm. senior anti-apartheid activist and Professor Jonathan Rosenhead and uh, and uh, Ernest Rodker, who were also involved at the time, that what the, the undercover police officers should have been doing yeah. is infiltrating the apartheid state agents operating in London. And uh, we'll be citing, as I will, three examples where the apartheid state uh, bombed the London officers of the, Afri of the African National Congress, of mm. Nelson Mandela's African National Congress, mm. uh, a bomb right in the heart of London in March 1982. Why did they not investigate that? The, the, those responsible were never brought uh, to justice. Why did they not hunt down the apartheid agents responsible for an arson attack in July 1985 on the headquarters of the anti-apartheid movement? Yeah. And why did they not investigate a letter bomb of the kind that killed ANC leaders across the world, like Ruth First and... Uh, and student leader uh, Ahmed Timo um, uh, and, and Eduardo Mondlani, the Frelimo yeah. leader. Yeah. Fortunately, the letter bomb sent to me in June 1972 didn't go off because there was a fault in the trigger mechanism. But the police showed no interest whatsoever yeah. in pursuing the truth and bringing to justice those responsible. Instead, they sought to disrupt the anti-apartheid struggle. And I want to talk about that. I mean, South Africa had its own styled Truth and Reconciliation Commission, but some argue that it did not go far enough in terms of looking at the role of the international community in terms of its support of the apartheid government. Do you think that you'll achieve your objective? 
Well, I agree that uh, that should have been the case uh, because there was a lot of dirty work went on on behalf of the apartheid state and a lot of corruption, especially over arms. I mean, President Zuma's 10 years of corruption were against the background of apartheid corruption as well. It was more he was continuing what the apartheid leaders did, especially over defense sales and other um, improper activities with allies in London and in Paris and in Washington yeah. and in Berlin and elsewhere. So I think that should have been investigated. But this particular official uh, government inquiry here in London yeah. is into policing uh, within our domestic political scene. And I don't think it will get to that kind of level of, uh, of revelation, unfortunately. It's, yeah. it's specifically focused on the things I've talked about, yeah. the infiltration of Yep. Um, progressive movements, environmentalists, women's rights groups, mm. uh, and and others who were protest and protesting against racism in Britain as well. Yeah, and we were the ones infiltrated, rather than uh, those responsible for injustice, whether it was apartheid or whether it was women's uh, yeah. discrimination against women or racism against Black Britons or um, environmental issues. Uh, the police yep. were on the wrong side of history in the 1970s and the 1980s, and I fear may still be in many respects. And that's what this inquiry, at least my evidence on Friday, is going to seek to uh, spotlight. Uh, the perpetrators of the UK not in power anymore. How will you find this justice? Well, a lot of the undercover police officers, for example, the ones, somebody calling himself Mike Ferguson, uh, sought to disrupt the Stop the 70 Tour campaign. And in their reports, they exaggerated what we were doing. They falsely, they, they told lies, for example, that we were uh, throwing tin tacks on the the pitch when the Springboks played uh, England at Twickenham. We did not, we never did anything violent like that. We invaded the pitch and sat down and often got beaten up for our, our trouble. So I think there's an accounting for all of that and it's good that there's an official inquiry because a lot of nefarious and reactionary activity was undertaken by the police and the intelligence services working hand in glove with South Africa's apartheid security services, particularly the Bureau for State Security bosses, it was known yeah. um, in the 1970s. Uh, and that needs to be exposed because it was part of the international yeah. alliance that, that worked hand in glove with the apartheid state. Lord Peter Hayne, thank you very much for joining us here on the SABC News Channel. A pleasure, it's a pleasure. speaking thank to you. you this evening.